the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. Sister and brother, get your pen and pads out because this is what this right in this class. This time you take precept upon precept. This is how we do class. We don't do this, 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 this. I'm pulling, I'm pulling a scripture, and then next thing I know, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm going to pull a scripture. I'm going to tell you what the most I say about it. That's how you do a class system, brother. Stop believing in these false props. Stop believing in these false doctrines. If they can't pull two or three precepts to back up what that scripture is saying, then the Lord said he ain't sent that, he ain't sent that prophet. That dream, that dream that he ain't sent him. The most I sent these real prophets out here to give you the understanding on how to get to the kingdom or how to worship him. Sisters and brothers, it's, it's simple. It's easy. It's right there. He knocking at the door. All thing you got to do is answer. But you're scared to answer because you're locked in another man's house. Locked in another man's prison, man. You will never get out of that psychological prison until you open the door and Christ set you free. That's right. Woo! Read on. It's the book of Romans, chapter 9, and verse 13. Bring it up. As it is written. As it is written. Read. Jacob, have, have I loved. Jacob, have I loved. Read. But Esau. But who? But Esau. The so-called white man. Read. Have I hated. Sister and brother, we've been to school before. I know one plus one, two plus two, two times two equals four. I know these things. So you meant to tell me my English teacher didn't tell me past tense? And what's the future tense? E-D yeah. means that's past tense. These brothers ain't even uh, fit, dropped out in eighth grade, but they're going to try to tell you how to read. The most I said, as it is written, as it is written, and when the most I write something, you, you can't take it back. Jacob, have I loved. The most I say, he used to love Jacob. He don't love him anymore. Esau, have I hated. Esau used to hate Esau, but I don't hate him anymore. Sister and brother, this is the beginning of this class right here. Please tune in. That's right. Esau is not the white man. That's right. He is Jacob's brother. Please believe this, sisters and brothers. Please believe this. What we have, brother Nay? 14. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, 13 and um, 9, right? Yes, sir. 9, 13. 9, 13. Read on. Verse 14. Uh-huh. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Read. Is there unrighteousness with God? So, I'm trying to, that's a question, brothers and sisters. That is a question mark after that. Is that unrighteousness with God because he said that he don't love Jacob anymore and he love Esau? Is that unrighteousness with that? Man, corner, we would talk that, 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 man, that's, that corner message sell down now the denial river. I'm, I'm, I'm denying that for him on now, man. I, I was corner, I believed in that. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take you back up. Let's go to verse 9. Let's jump up a little bit, brother Nate. Let's jump up a little bit because I want to get the sisters and brothers into the rhythm of how to read your Bible. Read! This is the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. For I am Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akium out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners. And Shalom to the Akwaf sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, no, therefore, ye sons of Edom, no, therefore, ye sons of Ham, no, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So you hear this reprobate, carnal ass, sambo, coon ass nigga talking about. 
Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai hates Jacob, but yet he loves Esau slash the Edomites, and he hates Jacob, Israel, and his sons, uh, the nation that he has uh, built, that he has made, the Israelites. But yet, you're an Israelite, and you're teaching this madness to other Israelites to seek love, acceptance, to have equality, and to uh, forgive and forget, okay? This is bullshit. This is complete bullshit. This is just another signal, another sign, another clarification from Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, that these niggas sold out. But, you know, it's not really that infuriating because, you know, somebody has to go to the left side and, you know, produce and, uh, 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 you know, uh, advertise and bring forth madness. And we got to correct it for edification's sake for the newcomers coming in and also to what? Sharpen our swords. So I got them, man. <laughs> don't worry about it. I got them. I got a lot of scripts. I don't want to rock the Zai. won't be long with it. And we'll get to the points. And I don't want to rock the Zai through the power and spirit and words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You shall be edified, man. Okay, but again, Malachi 3, verse 6. For I am Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I change not. So if the Lord said he hates Esau, he hates Esau. If he loves Israel, he loves Israel. That's not going to change. Okay? We're just literally having our asses whooped right now. We're literally being chastised. We're literally being corrected by our Heavenly Father. Because we continue to go off. We continue to rebel. We continue to not get in order. So we're getting our ass whooped, reproved. Okay? We're going through hell. Because of our disobedience. Okay? And we're going to prove that through scripture that the Lord loves Israel and that he hates Esau and they shall and will be judged. And that he is the so called goddamn white man, as they say, the Caucasian race. Okay? Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So there's an election that's going to be preserved, that's going to be saved, man. But you know, two-thirds which i believe is 6.66 which that's also spiritual going into the mark of the beast the sea hip okay because all these things look man all these things tie in man okay but let's continue man let's let's prove this you know because like i said i got a few scriptures and i don't want to be long when it i just want to get to the points so this is going to be the book of psalms chapter 94 and i'm gonna read verse 14 for the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, will not cast off his people. Hold on, but you, you telling us and the other Israelites that's listening to your madness that the Lord has cast his people off, that he hates us and he loves the so-called self-proclaimed white man, the Edomites. That's what you telling us, homeboy. Okay? This bug out nigga is literally telling his people that they're hated. So you might as well tell Jake he don't even need to be in the truth. He don't need to repent. He don't need to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability. They don't need to have faith. They don't need to change their diet. They don't need to, they don't need to do nothing that's of righteousness, man. That's instructed from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's basically what you're saying. That there's no salvation. There's no uh, uh, justice. There's no judgment coming from what, what has happened to our people. That's what you're telling our peop people, man. Dumbass nigga. Psalms 94, verse 14. For the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. And that's proven, man. And we're going to prove that through various scriptures that the Lord is not going to forsake his inheritance. Again, we are going through a reproval stage. We're having our asses whooped. We're on pun punishment right now. Okay, so like, let me grab some water. We're on punishment right now. Okay? We're literally in time out right now, okay? We're literally uh, uh, in punishment right now, you know, uh, and sitting in the corner, rubbing our asses for my ass is getting whooped, okay? And we're going to prove that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah loves Israel and he hates you goddamn Edomites, man, okay? But let's continue. 
But I'll read it again. 94 verse, Psalm 94 verse 14. For the Lord Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. So what are you, what are you talking about, man? The Lord's not going to forsake his inheritance, man. Well, let's, let's, let's keep on going, man. He, and he hasn't cast off his people. We're just being corrected. And furthermore, the house of Dewada, David, the elect is being raised up right now before your eyes. It's being reestablished. Okay, that third temple is spiritually being built right now. And then it has nothing to do with the Edomites, the Hamites, the Ishmaelites, okay, the Ammonites, the Moabites, etc. It's only with Israel. Okay? And just because you you trying to uh, twist and turn scriptures wickedly, you're going to be judged for that too, man. All you niggas that do shit like this, y'all going to be judged for this, man. But just because you're trying to twist and turn scriptures to uh, appease your, uh, your, um, your employer, <laughs> you know, you, 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 you're going to be put to death, man. Because what you said holds no, uh, holds no value, it's not profitable, and it's not true. Second Edris chapter 6, starting off at verse, uh, verse 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac. Listen, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. So when Jacob came out, his hand was holding to the hill of Esau. So what is that? It's, it's symbolic because we know when they was in the womb, they were tussling, they were fighting. And, and you know, Jacob was probably fucking Esau up. And it probably got to the point when she was giving birth that they was tussling and fighting again. Why do you think Esau came out first? I mean, obviously, you know, the Lord wanted wanted uh, Esau to come out first, you know, to, uh, to have the prophecy be uh, understood. But more than likely, Jacob, Israel, was probably beating the hell out of Esau. So Esau was, you know, obviously trying to rush to get out first. <laughs> and again, it's, it's, it, it also goes to the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai with this storyline. Okay. Of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay, and we when we know right now that Esau, the progenitor, his, his uh, uh, race, the Edomites, their downfall, their demise is literally happening right now before our eyes, man. Okay, it's literally happening right now before our eyes, man. And we have been going through a, a, a great abundance of hell, a great abundance of affliction, vexation, taxation, okay, unrighteous decrees, unrighteous laws, unrighteous judicial system, okay, unrighteous judges, unrighteous uh, 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 food products that are not fruit, that are not food, but poison. Okay, we have been targeted in Babylon the Great and across the four corners of the earth to be oppressed, to be used as a, a, a continual slave, man, for continual employment, man. They only look at you Israelites for entertainment, whether it be in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the fucking Colosseums, which is reincarnated back from Rome, basketball, football, soccer, okay, boxing. Okay, and also in the uh, uh, abominable, wicked-ass uh, uh, porn industry. Okay, in, in the, the music industry. Okay, in, in the uh, 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 movie industry. All these things, man. You're used and looked at for entertainment. That's, only, that's the only way they recognize you or for labor. Okay? But let's continue because, look, man, it, it makes uh, uh, sense, man. It makes sense. So let's go to the book of Baruch. Because we're the ones out here mourning. We're the ones out here going through hell. We're the ones out here being oppressed. Nobody else, man. And I don't want to hear that bullshit about, you know, Islam, um, Ishmael, and all these other people going through stuff. It's, it's the judgment that the Lord's bringing on them for what they have done to us, man. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4. And I'm going to start off at verse 23. For I sent you out mourning and weeping... Okay, because we got pushed out of our land mourning and weeping, ducking and dodging persecution, ducking and dodging uh, 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 um, captivity, man. 
slavery. Okay, ducking and dodging death. Ducking and dodging our adversaries, man. Okay, why? Because we went off. Because we wanted to do our own thing. We wanted to uh, dis disregard and disobey our power, man, our Heavenly Father. And now, and we we have been continuously getting our ass whooped for over 500 years, man. The Edomites ain't getting their ass whooped. The Ishmaelites ain't getting their ass whooped. The Moabites ain't getting their ass whooped. The Hamites ain't getting their ass whooped. And the only reason why stuff is happening to them now is because the Lord is starting to put them curses on them and start to bring, bring judgment upon the earth, man. That's the only thing why, man. But we get judged swiftly and quickly when it comes to something that, something that we do, man. For I sent you out mourning and weeping, but the Most High will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. So you mean to tell me that the Most High has given us promises in these scriptures that he said he will put us back in the land to, to have our land rejoice and us too in that land forever and never remove us? And it's also other scriptures to prove that uh, uh, one, one, one in particular, 2 Samuel chapter 7, I believe verse 9 on down. Okay, what's that, what's that? that also talks about Solomon, if he goes off, that he, he will beat with the, uh, the stripes of men, which goes into Yahweh Shah's crucifixion. Okay? And also to the promises before that. Verse 24. Like as now the neighbors of Zion, okay, all the other 17 nations, and you know, the Edomites, the Ishmaelites, the Hamites, etc. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall... They see shortly your salvation from our power. But hold on. So why would we be getting salvation from our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, if he hates us? If the Lord is not supping with us and dealing with us and rebuilding and restructuring us to righteousness, why would we receive salvation? You only give salvation to those that you love, those that you care about, those that's near and dear to your heart. Those that you really, really consider of value, that are precious to you. Trick. Okay? Read. Verse 24 again from the top. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. So the Lord's gonna, it's gonna be magnified upon the earth. This exodus that's going to happen in the very near future is going to make the old exodus of, uh, of the land of Egypt look like a, a childish thing, a very small matter. Okay? Period. And it's given to the Israelites, not to the so-called white man, not to the so-called Africans, not to the so-called uh, uh, Arabs, not to the so-called Chinese and uh, 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 Japanese, to the Israelites. Read verse 26, verse 25, Baruch chapter 4, verse 25. Read, my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. So, if the Most High loves the Edomites, why is it being stated and said the enemy, which is all 17 nations outside of Israel, that we're going to tread upon their necks? How come it doesn't say the Edomites are going to tread upon uh, uh, everybody's necks with Israel? How come, how come the Edomites aren't replacing the Israelites? Okay, this is madness, man. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. And that's what happened. That's why we were sold to the nations because we disregarded. We were disloyal, disobedient. We wasn't obeying the voice and the instructions of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, our Heavenly Father, man. Okay? We was completely out of line, man. So we deserve to get our asses whipped. Okay? Verse 27. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And that's what we do on a daily basis. When we make these lessons, we're crying out to the Lord. When we're praying, we're crying out to the Lord. Okay? When we're meditating, we're crying out to the Lord. Everything that we do of the hopeful elect, we're crying out to the Lord. The Lord feels the, the uh, vexation in our spirit, the, the, the eagerness and the yearning to be the fuck out of this hellhole, man. 
to get home, to, 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 to see the destruction of our adversaries, of our captors, to, to, to see these proud sons of bitches be put down, man. Be of good comfort, O oh my children, and cry unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. But hold on. You only be, you're only going to be remembered of a person if that person considers you to have some type of, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for here? So like it. You're only going to be considered if that person cares about you, has a soft spot in their heart for you, really considers what, you, what you're going through and really has what? Compassion towards you is remorseful okay cares about you again and that's only for us man only for us all right but let's continue man let's jump to the book of second address because like i said i'm gonna try to keep this as quick and precise and edifying as i can and like we read in the first precept, uh, uh, Malachi chapter three verse six, the Lord does not change, and neither does neither does Yahweh shine in the book of Hebrews. Okay, so we're gonna prove this man a goddamn liar. Okay, this is the book of Second Edges chapter three, and I'm gonna start off at verse thirteen. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham. Okay, so it started with Abraham. Well, actually, it started before that, but you know, this is what you know the. Uh, we're starting that right now. Him thou lovest, okay? Thou lovest. There goes there goes that world uh, lovest again. And unto him only thou showedest thy will. Okay, so he showed Abraham his will, his pleasure. Verse 15. And madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him, that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. So the Lord, our Heavenly Father, made a covenant with Abraham that he wouldn't forsake his seed. Now we know from reading the book of Genesis that he wanted the promise to go to, um, I believe, um, Ishmael. But uh, the Lord, the Heavenly Father, told uh, Abraham that his promise would be with uh, the son that he would have with his wife. Okay, Sarah. Okay, continuing on, verse uh, 16. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. Now listen, because I, I bet you the I bet you the precepts that I'm reading, they didn't bring these out. Okay? Because the Lord makes it clear throughout the book that Esau can have no repentance, he can have no mercy. Okay, again. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai makes it very, very clear and direct that Esau Edom, the so called self proclaimed white race, has no mercy or no repentance. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee. So he chose Jacob and, and, and brought Jacob into him and gave Jacob his secrets. Okay, which goes into the book of Baruch chapter 3, verse 36, Psalms chapter uh, 147, verse 19 on down. And also, I believe, uh, Sirach 45, verse 17. Okay, just to give you a few, I'm not going to read them. So again, Baruch chapter 3, verse 36, Sirach 45, verse 17, and Psalms 147, verse 19 to 20. And it also states in Psalms 147, 19 to 20, that he said he has dealt with no other nation and asked for his secrets. Okay, nobody has known them but Israel. Roughly paraphrasing. Okay, you can go read it for yourself. Okay, but back to 2 Edges 3, the rest of verse 16. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. And so Jacob, and so Jacob, and so Jacob became a great multitude, man. Okay. It's not talking about the Edomites. It's not talking about uh, uh, the Hamites. No, it's talking about the Israelites. Okay. Point blank period, man. There's no way around this, man. No way around this. Read. 
Psalms 132, starting off at verse 8. Arise, O Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, in thy rest, thou in the ark of thy strength. Let the priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. And as we know, every man from every single nation, from Judah on down to Issachar, is a priest right now being raised and prepped and taught right now as we speak. Okay, that uh, 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 that task, that vocation was given to the Levites. Now it's scattered to all 12 tribes. Okay, and I know that nigga, uh, Chief Priest uh, uh, Alizé, doesn't want to hear that and doesn't like that. He disregards it because he feels that he, he's a so-called Levite, which you don't even know if you're a, a son of Aaron. Okay, because you have to be a son of Aaron to have that particular... Uh, 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 have that particular lot to lock you. Okay? Read verse 9 again. Let the priests be clothed with righteousness and let thy saints shout, shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. The Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, have sworn in thy truth. Okay? Have sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it of the fruit of thy body. Will I set upon thy throne? Okay, now Shahawashai, that's going to be established on that throne, man. Okay, and then you know Yahawashai, King David, the 12 disciples, and the rest of the governing body, the 144,000, man. Okay, continuing on, verse 12. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever, my nigga. Okay, so how, how how does not the most high not love Israel, man? How? How is that? How is that? Okay, how is that, Bubba Gump? How is that? Read. Verse 13. For the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, have chosen Zion. He have desired it for his habitation. So he chose Zion, the Israelite, the Israelites, okay? Jerusalem. Okay, which is a people before it's a place, man. And then we already established in Malachi 3, verse 16, and also in Psalms 94, verse 14, that the Lord is that does not change and that he will and he will not forsake his inheritance or his people, Israel. Okay. Verse 14. This is my rest forever. Do you hear that? This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. So why would the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, be saying that Israel, Mount Zion, the Israelites, and also talking about establishing a covenant with David forever, but yet he hates the Israelites? That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I know I'm not remedial. I know I'm not, you know, I don't do drugs, you know. So, I'm, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense, homeboy. So let's continue. Let's, let's, let's keep on going, man, because you're looking pretty stupid. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel 35. And this whole chapter is uh, basically uh, makes his, his uh, argument look foolish. And I, I advise you to go back and read this whole chapter. I'm going to read. Uh, I'm going to start off at verse 5. And I'm going to end off at verse 8. Ezekiel chapter 35, starting off at verse 5. Read! Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity in the time that their iniquity had an end. So it's telling you because in the first precepts, it says, uh, it says, son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesied against it. So it's talking about the Edomites and it's literally saying, so literally saying in this time right now that they have shed the blood of the children of Israel perpetually, which is still happening right now. I mean, at the end of the day, we know it's judgment from the Lord, but it's still happening right now. And the people that you that you're trying to protect and, and de deflect for, that's who's doing it. And you literally cut yourself when you started your argument. Okay? The, the so-called self-proclaimed white race, the Caucasians, they are the Hebrew Edomites. Okay? Their forefather 
is Esau Edom. Okay? Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh Power, I will prepare thee unto blood. But hold on, you you saying that the Lord loves these these red, these red silverbacks, these thin lipped beasts? You saying the Lord loves these niggas? You saying the Lord loves the wicked? But the Lord is saying that, he, that He's going to prepare them for blood, man. Okay, go read the book of Isaiah thirty four. Again, go read the book of Isaiah thirty four. And again, man, this this lesson could be hours. Okay. It could be a, a longer than an hour. It could be damn near two hours of so many precepts to bring out to, to debunk your, your madness, man. Come on, man. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. So blood shall pursue thee. Okay? Since thou hast not hated blood, because blood is nothing to this man. Okay? So, uh, Sirach 8 verse 16. Blood is nothing to him. Okay, he 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 loves to, to see he loves to shed blood. He loves to taste blood. He loves to feel blood. He loves to smell blood. He probably dreams about blood, man. It's nothing to these devils, man. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So what does that mean? That means death, destruction, mayhem, chaos, man. Okay, matter of fact, I'm gonna grab another precept for that. To prove that you know they gonna get their ass whooped, they gonna get they they gonna get they gonna get, they gonna get this work, man. Like the brother of uh, Manatazak out in uh, Cali, man, get this work. They gonna get this work, goddammit. Just because you, you saying they ain't because they ain't owed oh, it, they, 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 this and that. They gonna get this work. They gonna get this motherfucking work. Trick. Where's that precept at? Uh, where's that? Uh, uh, slacky, 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 slacky. Where is it? Where is it? Uh. Here we go. Uh, this is the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 15, starting off at verse 53. If thou has, so like, if thou has not also slain my chosen, exalting the stroke of thine hands, and saying over the dead when thou was drunken, okay, because you know when, when Esau, I've seen videos where police officers, Edomites, so-called white people, you know, put so many goddamn clips, magazines in Jake, but go to the body with the goddamn uh, phone in, in their hand and they dead saying literally oh it looks like it's going to be a closed casket homeboy over jake's dead body man that's documented on uh, social media for for people to see man and also in the heavens you and you think that they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna get judgment for this you think the, the, the lord loves them Tuh. set forth the beauty of thy countenance the reward of thy whoredom shall be in thy bosom therefore shall thou receive recompense like as thou hast done unto my chosen saith Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai even so shall the Most High do unto thee and shall deliver thee into mischief okay and let's let's get a little depiction verse verse 57 thy children shall die of hunger and thou shalt fall through the sword Thy cities shall be broken down, and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. Okay, and that that, that sword in the field is going to be what Armageddon, World War Three, the civil uh, 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 wars, civil unrest, race riots, okay, etc. Man, whatever you want to call it, Jacob's trouble is, is the real definition of it. Okay, that's all going to happen. But let's jump back Ezekiel thirty-five to to speak on it more. Verse seven. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. So there's going to be a lot of destruction to these people, man. Judgment. Bloodshed. That doesn't sound like love to me, man. That sounds like judgment. That sounds like hatred. Okay? That sounds like a, a, a recompense. A, a, that sounds like revenge. Okay? Verse 8. And I will fill his mountain with his slain men so the lord said he's going to fill their mountain their establishment with slain edomites slain <laughs> slain caucasians man okay in thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers so the lord said he's gonna he's gonna do it everywhere it's going to be established in every single the every single uh, sector okay okay uh shall they fall 
that are slain with the sword. And he's going to do it with the sword because how did you do it to us? You did it, you did it to us with the sword continuously. So you're going to fall by the, fort, the sword, Salakia. And what did Yahweh Shai say? Yahweh Shai said in St. Matthew 26, verse 53, those that live by the sword shall die by the sword. Say I'm lying. Say I'm lying. It's over, man. I don't even got to continue, but guess what? We're going to continue. And why is the Lord going to do all this? Because you're making it seem like the Lord is a chump or punk, man. Like he really loves these, these red silverbacks. But let's continue. Zechariah chapter 2. And I'm going to start off at verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith Yahweh. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, saith Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So we were spread across the four corners of the earth. But the land of the north is talking about Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, North America. Okay? Where, where the massive judgment is going to be brought forth. Verse 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. So how do we deliver ourselves? We mentally and spiritually take ourselves out of this world. Okay? We come back to our Heavenly Father. We, we, we retransform and cleanse our mind with these scriptures. We change how we conduct ourselves. You know, we grow from these teachings. We apply what's in this, what's in this Bible right here to our spirit and our everyday life. We offend less. We repent daily. We pray. And if the Lord has set us up to be a teacher, we prophesy, we teach, we condemn, we, we, we profess, we proclaim, okay? We declare, okay, the, the testaments of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, and amongst other things too, you know, being brotherly, having charity, etc., man. Okay, we apply all these things to our everyday life. We change into that righteous man that the Lord wants us, us to be, that righteous woman, all right? Verse 8, for thus saith Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. And y'all have been touching, abusing, misusing, mistreating the nation of Israel for so, so, so damn long. And the Lord is not fucking around. And niggas like this that's talking madness and y'all leader who's bugged the hell out and y'all bugged out with him. The Lord has a grievous, horrific, brutal judgment for you Israelites that do shit like this, man. And we have no pity, no sympathy, no compassion for when he brings it forth. Okay? But let's continue. Let's keep on proving that the Lord loves Israel and that he hates you Israel, uh, so like you Edomites. Let's keep on proving it. And I got a few more. We'll close out. This is Revelation chapter 15, verse 6. For they have shed the blood of saints. Okay? For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. So... The, 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 the blood of the saints and the prophets have and will be shed in this land. Okay? And who are the saints? Okay? Because, you know, if they, if they, if they spew in madness like this, they'll probably say anybody's a saint. Anybody that, that, that believes in the Lord, believes in JC, he's a saint. Okay? But, you know, our people's blood has been shed. And again, uh, uh, some prophets are going to be martyrs or uh, witnesses for this gospel, for this truth, for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Okay? And the Lord is gonna give you what? Blood to drink, your own blood. You're gonna you're gonna be judged for what you do. Okay? What does it say in Colossians 3, verse 25? He that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done. And there is no respecter of persons, my nigga. But let's prove who are the saints. Let's grab a couple of quick precepts. Okay? This this is easy, man. This is easy, man. Why, why, why trimmest thy way to seek love, man? Seeking love, man, because you, you niggas want this place to continue. You don't want, you don't want Babylon the Great to be spoiled. Cause you're comfortable, man. You're comfortable. The stuff that Esau is giving you now is nothing compared to what the Lord is gonna give us to give us in the kingdom, man. This, this is, this is bullshit. This is peasant shit that y'all got, man. Psalms 50 verse 5 Gather my saints together unto me 
those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So let's 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 prove it through scripture. Let's let the scriptures break it down on this one. Okay, let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 24. And I'm going to read two precepts just to get to the point. Because it said, gather my saints together, those that made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So let's prove that. Uh, Exodus 24. I'm going to read verses 3 to, 3 to 6. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord Yahweh and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said all the words which Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, have said we will do. So like it will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar upon the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he set young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Okay? So it's talking about the, the, the saints are Israelites. Those are the only saints. Okay? And again, the new covenant, Jeremiah 31, I believe 31 on down, but I know it's chapter 31 for, for certain, and also Hebrews chapter 8, and also various other scriptures where, where it proves that we're going to have new bodies, we're going to have fleshly hearts, new minds with the uh, with the law, statutes, and commandments written, written in our heart, which is our mind. So all the new covenants and the promises is only for Israel. So how in the hell does not Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai love Israel? Come on, man. This, 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 it ain't hard to tell for us, man. What this guy right here is speaking is bullshit. So you, you're basically trying to give your, your 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 employer some type of false comfort, some type of false hope. You're basically trying to rearrange what the Lord has promised and what the Lord means. Basically, what this nigga is trying to do is trying to tell you Israelites that you have no hope. You have no uh, judgment coming for how you've been treated. You have no salvation. You have no promises. Everything that you have is given to the Edomites. And, 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 and another thing uh, that this idiot doesn't notice is he's condemning himself. He's, he's condemning himself too. Because you're an Israelite. Shit, you might be in a chocolate covered Edomite, to be honest with you. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna uh I got a few more. Let's let's continue. Okay, let's go to the book of Luke. I'm gonna read uh, chapter 18, and I'm gonna start off at verse start off at verse 7. And shall not the most high avenge his own elect? Do you hear that? And shall not the most high avenge his own elect? which cried day and night unto him, though he bear with them. So who's the elect? Who's the elect of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai? Who's the elect? Let's grab some precepts to prove that point. Okay, because let's let the Bible talk, man. Like, like, like this guy said, they, they saying what they want to say. So we're going we gonna to say what the Bible says, nigga. We're going to say what the Bible says. Okay. Let me see here. Bear with me, Israel. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me, Yasharala. Okay. Yeah, we can read this and we'll read another one to back it up. Matter of fact, we can definitely read this. I'm going to go straight to the point. Matter of fact, nah, you know what? I'm going to start at verse 8. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, starting off at verse 8. Read! They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai shall understand the truth. And again, this is a prime, a prime example of you not putting your trust and your fear and your humility in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Look what happens, man. The Lord bugs you the hell out to judge you. And such as be faithful in love, okay, how do we love the Lord? By keeping his commandments to the best of our ability. Because we're in this corruptible flesh, this weak flesh, we cannot keep the law to a T. We cannot keep the law 144 cent, but we attempt to, to put effort. Okay, action. And also we're in captivity. 
All right? And Esau is the wicked of the wicked, man. It's not going to happen. Okay? Um, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy. Hold on. It's grace and mercy. So you're getting grace and mercy. You get grace and mercy from somebody that actually has sympathy, compassion, love, that care for you. Okay? For grace and mercy is to his saints. And we just established who the saints are. So we can definitely read this for this lesson. We just established who the saints are. Okay? And uh, another precept for that is also uh, Psalms 148. Um, I want to say verse 5, but I know it's in Psalms 148 somewhere there in the beginning. Okay? Grace for grace and mercy is to his saints, and he have care for his elect. Now let's grab another precept before we go back to Luke to prove who the elect are again, which we just did. But we're going to get another another precept, you know, just in case. Just in case I don't make it home tonight. <laughs> this is a lucky. All right. Where is that sucker at? Okay, okay, okay. Bear with me, Yasharala. Bear with me. All right, this is the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. I have called thee by name. Come on, man. This is easy. This is easy. So this is who the Lord's worried about. This is who the Lord loves. Period, man. Now let's jump back to Luke 18, starting off at verse 7 again. And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which we just established, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. And that's what we do, man. We cry day and night. Again, sending up prayers, sending up curses. The edification is us crying out. Our, 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 the vexation in our spirit is crying out. Okay, our, 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 you know, our love, our obedience, our submission, our subjection. Us uh, taking heed to the voice of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is us crying out. All these things that we do is crying out and showing our demeanor, our um, alliance with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Verse eight. I tell you. That he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So the Lord's going to avenge us, man. He's not going to avenge no damn Edomites. The so-called self-proclaimed white man. What, what, ha what, what hasn't he done? What hasn't he done? He's done everything and he's gone above and beyond to show forth his wickedness and his evil deeds, man. But you got niggas that's trying to comfort their employer. That's trying to give a false hope and basically tell you Israelites that you ain't shit. That's that's literally what he's doing this lesson. He's telling you Israelites that you ain't shit. That the Lord hates you and the Lord loves your, 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 uh, your captor. <sighs> Jake, man. You, Jake is wicked as shit, man. Let's get another scripture to, to back up that shows that, you know, the Lord didn't give these niggas the, the, the customs. He didn't... Uh, you know, uh, feed them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He didn't uh, give them the law, statutes, and commandments. And furthermore, no, no other nation has taken heed to the, to the law, statutes, and commandments but Israel. Second Edris chapter 3, starting off at verse 30. For I have seen how thou sufferest them sinning and hast spared wicked doers. Okay, because it says also in the book of uh, Psalm 78, Roughly paraphrasing that, you know, we'll understand that the latter end, which we do now. And it also says uh, in the book of Job that the wicked are preserved, okay, for that last, that, that second death. That they're preserved for the day of judgment, for the day of punishment, okay, which involves, again, that second death. Okay, Armageddon, which is World War Three. all right? For I have seen that thou hast suffered them sinning. And has spared wicked doers, and has destroyed thy people, 
and has prepared thine enemies and has not sanctified it. Now, now it's, it says we, we have been destroyed, right? But let me, let me let's hold that real quick. Let me grab a precept to, again, to prove what I just said in a little bit. You know, a little, give a little bit of an insight of what I just said. Uh, Salakia. Um, I think that's Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12. I think that's what it is. Uh, yes, yes, here it is. Yep. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12, verse 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us. Okay, so again, when we do something wrong, as um, Edra stated, we get destroyed. We get chastised. We get reproved. We get corrected. Just like that. Quick. Swiftly. Okay? No, 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 no delay. All right? Wisdom of Solomon 12, verse 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, Thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. Do you hear that? Thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. So the punishment that we continue to receive right now in this correction, this ass whooping that we're, 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 we're being given in this captivity, in this hellhole in Babylon the Great, is nothing. It's nothing. It's little. It's, it's little compared to what the Lord is going to do to our enemies in the kingdom and what he's going to have us do. The spirit that he's going to put on us. Matter of fact, woo, call all y'all Bashim, y'all Shah Bahashim, Rakak Wadash. Let's grab that. The Wadi Yahab Bashim, Yahab Shah, because I would have forgot to bring this out. The Wadi Yahab Bashim, Yahab Shah, man, I love my Heavenly Father, man. The Wadi Yahab Bahashim, Yahab Shah Bahashim, Rakak Wadash, the Wadi Yahab, the Wadi Yahab Shah, man, because I wanted this to come out. So answer this, homeboy. Ezekiel 25, starting off at 12. Thus saith Yahweh power, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Woo! Therefore thus saith Yahweh power, I will also scratch out my hand upon Edom. So hold on, but you saying, you saying that the Lord loves the Edomites. The Lord's not going to scratch his hand out against somebody that he loves. Because you said that that, that, that that has flipped over. That, that's flip-flop. The Lord loved, as you said, he used to, past Israel. And he, he used to hate Esau, but now he hates Jacob, the Israelites. And now he loves the Edomites. Ain't that, that's what you said. That's what you said. Verse 13. Thus saith Yahweh power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Teman and they of Dadan. And those are the, the, uh, the, 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 so like the Edomites that have, uh, 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 uh intellect that have some, uh, 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 some smarts. Okay. I believe one of those are the Germans, if I'm not mistaken, uh, shall fall by the sword and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. And the hand of my people Israel. So like it. So like I said that wrong. Ezekiel 25 verse 14 again. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. So the Lord is saying that he's going to lay vengeance, judgment. Okay. No mercy. No, no, no sympathy. No, no, no consideration. No nothing on the Edomites. But he's going to do it through his people Israel. So what are you talking about? And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger. So the Lord is going to put his spirit on the Israelites. So you think we're mad right now. <laughs> wait till, wait till Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah puts his, his anger on us to do to them. So uh, the terror that we think right now that we're putting in our minds to bring forth judgment in the kingdom, it's, it's small. The stuff that we're thinking of right now is going to be elevated. We're, we're going we're gonna to look at how we, was, how we was thinking in this captivity and, and what we was going to do. We're going to be like, damn, that's nothing compared to, you know, that was that was bullshit. What we was going to do, what, what we're doing right now is just, it's worse. <laughs> okay. They shall do and eat them according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith Yahweh power. So that, that doesn't sound like love to me. 
That doesn't sound like the Lord hates Israel and loves the Edomites. No, it sounds like the Lord loves Israel and hates the Edomites. Nigga. Okay, so back to 2nd Edris chapter 3, verse 31. I do not remember how this way may be left. Are they of Babylon better than they of Zion? Or, or is there any other people that knoweth thee besides Israel? Or what generation have so believed thy covenants as Jacob? So in the Lord, and, and Edris was also quoting this. When I read verse 31, or verse uh, 32. Or is there any other people that know of thee besides Israel? So Edges was quoting this. Just said in a different way. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Hear this word that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. That's what Ezra was quoting. Okay? And that's clear as day. I don't got to break that down. Okay? Verse 31 again. I do not remember how this way may be left. Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? Or is there any other people that knoweth thee besides Israel? Or what generation have so believed thy covenants as Jacob? And yet their reward appeareth not. And their labor have no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth, and think not upon thy commandments. And see, at this point, you know, uh, 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 Ezra was asking the Lord for the guidance and questioning him about this and about that, and you know, why we're going through this and why we're going through that. And Ezra has so much love for our people that at one point, I can't remember exactly which chapter it is in 2nd Edges, but he said, the Lord said, how can thou lovest my people more than me? You know? How can you love my people more than me? But let me grab this real quick, because I want to grab this, because this is this this definitely goes into, you know, this lesson, man. Um, if I can find a chapter, I know it's in Numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, it's in Numbers. Is it Numbers or is it Exodus? Um, chuckles. God darn it. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Bear with me. Bear with me. This is. It goes into the lesson. Goes into the lesson. Yep. This is it right here. Yep. This is it right here. The water. How about Shem Yahusha? By Hashem Rakat Kodash. The water. Okay. Uh. It's the book of Numbers 23. I'm going to start off at verse 5. I'm, I'm just going to read through. Y'all can go back and read this yourself. Uh, this is Numbers 23, starting off at verse 5. And the Lord Yahweh put a word in ba Baalam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, unto him <clears throat> so like it, <clears throat> so like it. Numbers 23, verse 6. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And Moab is the so-called Chinese. It's a lot Verse 7. And he took up this parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, had brought me from Aram, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. How shall I curse whom the Most High have not cursed? Okay, how shall I curse whom the Most High have not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, have not defiled? So this completely goes against what this dude is saying, man. Even though we go through hell, even though we're being judged, even though we're having our asses whipped, we're being vexed. We're being oppressed. We're being uh, uh, put through all types of uh, uh, unrighteous judgments, unrighteous decrees by our adversaries, mainly by the damn Edomites, man, because they run the world, man. We cannot be defiled. We cannot be cursed because the Lord has blessed us for the end, end the um, the uh, the end game. 
Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read on and You'll get it. Verse 8 again. How shall I curse whom the Most High have not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, have not defiled? For from, so like it, verse 9. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, <laughs> and let my last end be like his. So basically, the Most High gave Baalim, if I'm saying his name right, a, a, a smidgen of a vision to show the latter end of our nation. How, how, how great of a promise, of a gift, of everything that the Lord's going to give us that he wants to He wants to suffer with us. A fucking heathen. The heathen, the Lord gave this heathen a, 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 a piece of a vision to show our latter end of, of, our, of our blessing, our promises. The love that he has for us. The, 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 the compassion, the sympathy. How, how we're near and dear to his heart. He showed a little bit of that to, to, uh, to this heathen that he wants to be, he wants to partake in our judgments and our trials and our tribulations, man. That it was so glorious. Again, I'm going to read that again. Verse 10. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. <laughs> Woo, man, I love it. I love it. I love it. Kohlo Yabashim Yahushai Bahashim Rakat Kwadash, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. Man, let's get it. Let's go. Second Edges chapter 3, verse 33. And yet the reward appeareth not, and their labor have no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth. And think not upon thy commandments. And that's good. You know, the, the most high is just. Everybody's had their time to rule. Everybody's had, had their time to prosper. We have to understand that, man. Our power is a balanced, just power, man. Continuing on, verse 34. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell in the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. And that's self-explanatory. Because the name of Yahweh Shem Yahweh is sweet. It's lovely. You know, furthermore to the elect, speaking it, proclaiming it, professing it, cleaving on to it. Okay? Verse 35. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people it's like or what people have so kept thy commandments? Thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts but not the heathen self-explanatory baby self-explanatory and that's true that's true because in every single captivity captivity the elect always are being awoken risen up the prophets the people that believe come back to keeping the precepts keeping the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai you always come back in your lot if you're of the righteous, you're going to come back to be righteous. You're going to repent. You're going to take heed. You're going to follow. All right? So let's get these last two precepts and close out, man. I mean, I, I look, man, I had fun doing this lesson, man. I really did, man. And you know, I don't want rock desire. You true. You true. You true. You true. You true. You true. Sincere Akin Wa Akwaf got something out of this, man. I hope it was informative and edifying and uplifting to the power and spirit and words of Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shah. So let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39. And again, this is self-explanatory. I don't got to break this down. I'm just going to read it. But you know, you know me, I may stop here and there, but this is self-explanatory though. Um, Ezekiel 39. And in my Bible, starting off at verse 8, which I'm going to start off at verse 22, but starting off at verse 8, it says Israel's victory. Ezekiel 39 in my Bible, starting off uh, at verse 8, it says Israel's victory. So y'all can go back and read that part yourself, but I'm going to start off at verse 22 for this lesson. 
Ezekiel 39 verse 22. So the house of Israel shall know that I am Yahweh their power for that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore, I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So they fell. So I can so fell they all by the sword. So that's why we're in this in this position. OK, because we were rebellious. We trespassed against our power. So we, we had to get our asses whooped. We had to get that rod of correction. And you know, it's been years upon years, but hey, look, man, the, our Lord is a perfectionist, man. And he's perfectingly whooping our ass. Okay, we got everything that we deserve and more. Okay, and we're all worthy of death, man. So for, you know, I don't want to rock this out. For us to have uh, mercy, it, it's considerate, man. And the Lord's only going to give mercy for those that he loves. And it's for mainly uh, the Israelites in, 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 our, in our nation for the elect, which we hope and pray to be. Verse uh, 24. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Okay. And uh, worship of, of idols, you know, wanting to be like the heathen, uh, partaking and cleaving to their customs. Okay. Literally going against our laws. All this, man. Okay. And and uh, from verse 25 on down, it says, Israel, Israel shall be restored. So Ezekiel 39, in my Bible, it says, Israel shall be restored, starting off at verse 25. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh power, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. So how in the hell does the Most High not love Israel no more and he's going to have mercy on us and he's going to restore us. How, how was that? It makes no sense. Well, let's continue. Verse 26. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespass, whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. So we're going to dwell safely in our land and we're not going to be made afraid. Nobody's going to come against us. You're not going to be able to come against us, man. We're going to have new minds, new bodies, new hearts. Okay? And we're going to be made famous. Matter of fact, I'll grab that. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab that right now. Why is the Lord going to do this Do this to a people that he, that he hates? This is the book of Zephaniah chapter 3, starting off at verse 18. Verse 17. The Lord Yahweh, thy power in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in it's like a, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So the Lord is going to be rejoicing. He's going to be singing, you know, for, uh, you know, bringing us back and cleansing us and purifying us and, uh, you know, giving us mercy, man. The Lord is going to rejoice. <laughs> Come on, man. This nigga wicked, man. Verse 18. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the Solomon assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. And, and that's for the elect because all this stuff to us is a burden, man. It's heavy on our spirit. It vexes us, man. You know, we we, 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 we cleave to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh to endure this, man. We ask the Lord to give us the strength to endure this, man. We hate this fucking place, man. And we would rather be in the heavens with the Heavenly Father, but we have a vocation which goes into a calling to, to a task to do, man. And we're going to do it. Okay, and we hope to be of that first resurrection, that first lot, to, to be partakers of uh, the reconstruction, the uh, the re um, re uh, establishment, the reorder of the earth and, and of our nation. Okay, verse nineteen. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. So the Lord's the Lord's gonna give us fame in every land where we have put been put to shame. So in other words, you're gonna be on our dick. Okay? 
You you hate you hated you you hated our men, you hated our woman. Now you're gonna love our man and love our woman. And guess what? You won't be able to lay with our woman. Okay, the Israelite woman will be in order. Okay, she will only be laying with Israelite men, like she should be right now. <laughs> okay? And you heathen woman, yeah, you, you know, you may you may have a job and everything else, but you're not gonna get treated like the Israelite woman. Matter of fact, you're gonna be servants to the Israelite woman too. Okay? Period, man. At that time will I bring you again, even in the even in the time that I will so like here. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And that's talking about Israel. And in, and in this chapter right here, uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, starting off at verse 14, it, it says, Rejoice at the people's salvation. And verse 14 says, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel, be glad. So what is the what the fuck is this nigga talking about, man? The Lord loves us, man. He adores us, man. Especially the elect, which we hope and pray to be, you wicked ass nigga, man. Hey, Amen, but somebody got to do it. Somebody got to do it. Ezekiel 39, uh, verse 27. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and, and, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Come on, man. This is, this, this is easy, man. The Lord's going to make it known that he's always and will love Israel and that he's only dealing with Israel and he's going to set things back in order like it's supposed to be. Verse 28. Then shall they know that I am Yahweh, their power, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them onto their own land and have left none of them any more there. So all Israel. So what does that mean? That means all Israel is going to be saved. Okay. So when y'all th when y'all say two thirds won't come back into the um into the um the kingdom, you're right. And the reason why I'm saying you're right is because two thirds of our people that were put to death will not come into the kingdom in that same mentality, that same spirit that they had in the world. They will come back righteous. What does it say in the book of Isaiah? All thy people shall be righteous, man. And if we're going to be bringing forth kids, do you really think the Lord, man? I hate you niggas, man. I really do, man. Verse 29. Neither will I hide my face anymore from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith Yahweh power. Woo! Self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. So the Lord's gonna put his spirit on us, man. He's gonna we're gonna have new hearts, a fleshly heart, new minds. We're gonna be walking, we're gonna be walking uh, Bibles, man. We're literally going to be walking Bibles, man. Okay? We're never ever gonna go off, man. We're gonna love our, our, our nation like we've never loved our nation before, man. Man, this is beautiful, man. So let's 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 close out with your how How about that? Let's close out with Yahweh Shah. Let's see what Yahweh Shah said about uh, uh, Israel. And furthermore, the elect. This is the book of St. John, chapter 17, starting off at verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And we already know that Yahawasha Hamashiach said out of his own mouth, he is only sent to the house of Israel. And he is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, from the house of David. So we're gonna leave it right there, man. I know I know it was a long lesson, but hey man, look, man, I had fun. I had fun. I had fun doing this lesson. And you know, I don't want to wrap this out. We can continue to have more fun doing lessons like this, regardless of how long it is. But hey, man, it's all it's all of your high by Shimmy man. 
you know, praying to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man, to, uh, to direct me on what he wants to come out, okay? I had another lesson in mind, but, you know, when I saw the beloved Elder Apostle Tahar bring this out, I said, yeah, man, that's what the Lord wants me to bring out, and that's what I'm going to bring out. You know, so, you know, I don't want to write this out, man. I hope and I pray that this is edifying, uplifting, and informative. And, 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 and you know, and just spiritual in every aspect, man. And just, you know, built you up hearing these precepts and just, you know, having this truth flow through your, uh, your spirit and your mind, man. So I don't want to write this out. So with that, I'm just going to say, call Holayim La. Abinawi Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Raka Kwadash Watha Wada Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Raka Kwadash for putting the spirit on me, my elder apostles, elder bishops, elders, brothers on down, for doing these epistles to enlighten you, to inform you, to edify you, and uplift you through the power and spirit and words of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. May the blessing and election and protection be be uh, upon you and your household to my true sincere Akim Wa Akwaf. And again, I hope it I hope it, I hope it was edifying, uplifting, and informative through the power and spirit and words of Yahweh Ba Shim Yahweh Shai. I don't want man. Love y'all, love y'all, love y'all, man. Y'all always in my prayers, man. Love y'all, Israel. So with that, hey man, I'm just gonna say Shalom.